You're listening to the Results Driven Organizations podcast with Dr. Tanya Lowe, a podcast of curated conversations with C-suite leaders and those who support organizational growth and development. Get ready for inspiring interviews, educational lessons, and thought-provoking discussions that will challenge you to execute something new and innovative that will drive results in your organization. And now, here's Dr. Tanya Lowe. Hello. You're listening to episode 24 of the Results Driven Podcast with Dr. Tanya Lowe. Using my results driven philosophy of strategy, leadership, teams, and customer experiences, I help organizations develop their best kept secret, their human capital. Have you started preparing for your exit? No, I- I'm not trying to kick you out of your job, but seriously, have you started preparing for your exit? The term is succession planning, and in this episode, I'm going to discuss passing the torch, succession planning strategies for sustainable leadership. So imagine this. I I had a client who had been in their position for about five years. They did some amazing things, and kind of like myself, back when in my career days, they were a solo trailblazer. They came in, they worked their five years, and then they were preparing to go on to their next uh, episode, if you will. They never spent time developing or identify, developing uh, a successor or identifying an internal successor, someone who could follow in their footsteps, or a, a a team of people, if you will, that they could select from in order to follow in their footsteps. So as you can imagine, now there's a gap in the organization and things get kind of thrown to the side. People don't know what to do um, as it relates to where are we going to find someone to fill this 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 position. And so as you can imagine, it takes a lot of time. But if there were people in-house, if there was someone internally that they that the person could have been developing along the way, they could have at least stepped in um interimly. That's a word. So I want to talk about succession planning today because it doesn't matter what the organization is. It doesn't matter what, um, whether you're a nonprofit, for-profit, community-based organization, or a church even. Succession planning is important. Succession planning is the process of identifying and developing potential successors for key leadership positions within your organization. It doesn't mean that, uh, I think many times people don't want to think about succession planning because they immediately think that this person is going to be after my job. Something could happen on any given day and you're not there and you need someone who can step in. You need someone who can step in when it's quote unquote their term. So succession planning involves assessing current and future leadership needs, identifying individuals with um, the potential to fill those roles when they become available, and implementing strategies to prepare them for future responsibilities. Now, in a lot of the organizations that I go in, they do the first part, but the last part, the final part, they fail to do, implementing strategies to prepare them ongoing strategies to prepare them for the future. So here's the thing. Leaders should ideally begin succession planning on day one of their leadership tenure or even before that. And you're you're probably thinking, oh my God, I'm just coming in and I don't have time to think about <laughs> developing other people right now. I'm trying to get my feet wet. Well, you don't, you don't have time not to have time. That makes sense. You have to make the time as you are getting your feet wet, as you are conducting your, your 90 day interviews 
finding out who you have on your team, getting to know the people on your team. That's uh, being engaged with the, the people in what I call your community. So starting early allows you to have a long-term perspective and ensure sufficient time for identifying, grooming, and developing potential successors. So here's what happens when you can initiate succession planning early. Um, I'm going to go through these really quickly, but write them down. Here's where you're going to want to get your pen and paper. So when you initiate succession planning early, you can identify what I call high potential, high value employees, right? So starting early allows you to observe and evaluate an employee's skills and capabilities and their potential, as well as their desire to want to move up in the organization. It also provides you an opportunity to identify uh, individuals who exhibit certain qualities and competencies required for future leadership roles. That's why it's, it's really important to not just have a job description, but really break those competencies down. Like, are they a strategic thinker? Are they entrepreneurial? Um, are they a team player and a team builder as evidenced by what? So identifying high potential employees and um, observing and evaluating their skills. The next thing you want to do is um, succession planning requires investing in the development of potential successors. Um, you want to make sure that you've got plenty of time to provide development opportunities. And again, it's not a one and done. They went to an offsite. They, you know, had a coach for 90 days, but it's that ongoing, consistent, targeted training, mentoring, job rotating, stretch assignments that will enhance the skills and experiences of potential um, successors. So here's the thing. Here's the next thing. You want to make sure that you address skill and knowledge gaps soon. Identifying succession needs early allows you to identify these gaps that exist within the organization, the knowledge and the skill gaps. When, when we recognize what these gaps are early on as a leader, you can implement strategies to address them through training programs, coaching, assessments, or other development initiatives like the kind that we offer in our company. And then you want to, from there, what it allows you to do is build a robust talent pipeline within, right? Within. Hiring skilled talent from within sends a message to other staff that there's growth here. Employees want to be a part of an organization where they know they can grow. There's room to move up, move around, move across. Like I didn't come into this organization just to say in this seat. Those are the people you want to pay attention to. I can remember when I was in in the career uh, in in my career. If I didn't feel like my talents and skills were being utilized, if I didn't see an opportunity to um, progress within the company, I didn't stay there very long. So starting succession planning early allows you to build a strong talent pipeline over time within the organization. And when you do this, it allows you to cultivate this pool of individuals who are prepared, they're ready to step in um, into any leadership role, when the need arises. And I and I often tell people that you don't have to be leaving the organization. You may be on vacation and you need someone to step up. And, you know, here's the difference between I can never take off because I don't have people who can function like I function. But if you develop them along the way, right? If you develop them along the way, you can go on vacation. You can take that mental health day and you know that the kitchen is not gonna be burned down if you will, because you've prepared them. They've had an opportunity to see uh, and experience how leadership works within the culture that you're in. And you can do this um, while minimizing the, the risk of leadership gaps and disruption. 
And then um, finally, finally, succession planning. Succession planning um, fosters a culture of leadership development. According to a study by the Society for Human Resource Management, SHRM, organizations with effective leadership development programs had 13% higher employee retention rates compared to those without such programs. And then the Corporate Leadership Council found that companies with a strong leadership culture experienced a 9% lower turnover rate than those without. Now let's peel this onion back a little and look at the layers. One, uh, first of all, <laughs> a culture of leadership development provides employees with clear path, with a clear path for growth and development. We all want to grow. We all want to advance. Um, but when you have a culture of development, employees know that they're going to get what they need. Now, here's the thing. I know you're already thinking, what if we develop everybody and they leave? Well, that's not the question you need to ask. You need to ask, what if we develop everybody and they stay? It's a mindset shift. When employees see opportunities for career progression within an organization, they are more likely to stay rather than seek employment somewhere else. Secondly, um, leadership development programs focus on enhancing employees' skills, their competencies, and personal growth. So employees appreciate companies that invest in their professional development, which in turn leads to increased job satisfaction and loyalty. I, I like to call it, you know, professional development that is in alignment with not only the organizational goals, but the individual's goals as well as making sure that people are in the right seat on the bus. The next thing that that um, that you want to look at is that leadership development in initiatives that involve mentorship, coaching, training programs like the ones we offer <laughs> that engage employees and enhance their job satisfaction will increase engagement and motivation. Engaged and, in, and motivated employees are more likely to stay within an organization. And we all know it costs more money to hire than it does to retain. And then finally, leadership development programs often involve building strong relationships with colleagues, mentors, and senior leaders. I just wrapped up um, an eight-week executive training um, thing <laughs> with a client. And we had workshops. We had a series of leadership workshops. We had assessments. We had coaching. Um, we had some personal growth. And what it allowed the employees to do or the, the leadership team to do, which was about 12 people, uh, it allowed them to get to know each other better. It allowed them to get for each other to to understand their how they work. It allowed them to really do some uh, introspection to look at how do I show up? How am I leading other areas of the organization? Uh, and at the end of the the eight weeks, they were uh, more connected to the company. They were more. In inspired to to move on um, with the new skills that they had learned specifically about themselves. And so I share that story to say that engaged and motivated employees are likely to um, not only stay with an organization, but when you have these, these training programs, it creates a sense of belonging and loyalty to an organization, when they understand how the organization works, where do I fit? Uh, it, it, can I bring my true authentic self, um, my true authentic professional self to the table and contribute? When we do this, these connections, it, it creates a sense of belonging, loyalty to the uh, organization, making employees more, again, more inclined to stay. You want people to stay. And it doesn't mean that people aren't going to leave, but 
we want to make an environment where people want to stay. So, and when this happens, it, it, it creates um, a stronger connection to the company, a stronger connection to the mission and the vision. So that's always very important to me. Um, so here you have it, you know, by, cre- by prioritizing succession planning from the beginning, <laughs> as a leader, you send a clear message to employees that organization values, that as an organization you value their growth and development, which in turn um, fosters a culture of continuous learning, talent development, and career progression. So keep this in mind. While starting succession planning is ideal if it begins um, early, like on day one, it's never too late to begin. Even if you have not initiated the process early on, you should still prioritize and implement succession planning strategies as soon as possible to ensure the long-term success and sustainability of the organization. You put in a lot of work where you are. If you leave or if you're away, you don't want that to fall to the wayside. You want people to come in and pick up and continue where you left off. So leaders um, start succession planning ASAP, ASAP. I hope you enjoyed this episode on Passing the Torch, Succession Planning Strategies for Sustainable Leadership. Visit the show notes page to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, but you can subscribe to us on Spotify, um, iHeartRadio, on YouTube, just everywhere. Go and order our copy of our Amazon number one bestseller, Results Driven Organizations, The Four Keys to a High Performance Workplace. And and while you're on the show notes page, grab our special gift to you for being a valued listener. Until next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Results Driven Organizations podcast with Dr. Tanya Lowe. Be sure to review the show notes for the resources mentioned, and don't forget to grab your free gift available at freegiftfromtanya.com. Until next time.